It's June the 18th, 2014, and we are in a lot of trouble because of Fukushima and the radioactive fallout that has blanketed our entire planet because of Fukushima. Fukushima has three melter reactors, 100%. Fukushima's reactors are three times the size each of them. Didn't do a reactor at Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima, three 100%. And they're three times bigger. They're using fuel from missiles. Oh my goodness. And hi to everybody. Why my page froze up? Whatever. Everything's rocking and rolling. Scottish girl was talking about Lauren Moret. There's just where it came online. Hang on, check the audio. Yay, works. <laughs> How long has it been working? Good for a couple of months now. No boo boos. Hi, Anthurst. Thank you. Catch alive. Starlight. Uh, once again, back to Scottish. Scotty girl, and she's talking about Lorraine Moret, uh, latest video about the Wigner effect, how radiation affects metal. Now, that's well known because reactors have a lifespan, a short lifespan, and because they don't actually um, use that all the time, but that's what it's based upon, that the reactor... Now when the reactor melts down, if you take a piece of metal, say you take a coat hanger and you bend that coat hanger, what happens? The coat hanger gets weaker and weaker. But say you don't finish the job, do you think it's any less weaker that you didn't finish breaking it? No, because the metal is fatigued, right? And so, the, you know, another couple of little wiggle wiggles and somebody got a rip in her shirt or their dress or whatever the case may be. Now radiation works like that on metal, all on its own. Radiation generates heat. A gram of uranium uh, will put produce in its lifetime into reactors about a million watts, a million watts, and uh, that works out to 333 3,000 watt heaters running for uh, the, the lifespan of that fuel, 18 months or whatever. So if you put a 3,000 watt heater in your room that you're in right now and turn it on bust and close your windows and close your doors and you didn't turn it down, at some point you would run into the room, hopefully, if you you didn't pass out. Because you would die. Cause it, but imagine uh, 333 3,000 watt heaters. But think of a, of a gram in the context of Fukushima, because it's ionized radi radiated elements, then that's more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet combined. Now when you think about a rod, or you think about a bundle of rods, there's 80 rods in a bundle, and the bundles are 12 feet long, the rods are 12 feet long, so 60 to 80 rods that are 12 feet long. And that bundle weighs around 1,500 pounds. Hang on a second. Where's the good old calculator to? Somebody's going to beat me to it. Now, I better hurry. Got to beat everybody to the calculator. Oh, oh, I boobied. Someone's going to beat me. Hang on, I got it. Hi, Ronald McKnight, David, MSVS, Missing Sky, Roosevelt, Stacy Anderson. And I got your message the other day, and I got a copy and paste, because uh, YouTube won't let anybody, won't let anybody uh, copy from your description. It's really, really weird old land now YouTube has gone into. I mean, you folks, uh, just hundreds of comments before the video started, five, six hundred comments here, more probably. And later, I can't come in and say, hey, that was cool, or thank you, or you're awesome, or I don't know about that, or I can't say nothing because Google took that away from us. Just like the 600,000. Not that I'm going to go down that road tonight, but 
Mr. I can see cats alive, and I like to say hi to people, and it's just a warm up in the first few minutes. Lighter side of genocide, DC Babu, M Thirst again, the lighter side of genocide, Grandma Goldie's there, Starlight, Ronald McKnight, Lunar, and um, cats. Let me see. Okay, so back to the equation of 1,500 pounds in a bundle divided by. Uh, let's say 70 rods in between 60 and 80, right? So we'll say 70. And so each rod is 21 pounds. Uh, so 21 pounds times, oops. Okay, let me start that over again. I'm just winging this one, right? So 21 pounds in a rod, the rods are 12 feet long. And you multiply that by 29 grams. And so each rod has 600 plus times more radioactive atoms, 600 times more, just per rod, than every grain of sand on every beach on planet Earth. Okay, let's do one more mathematics before I give it up. So 609 grams times uh, 70. Uh -huh. I could have done this easier, but it didn't. <clears throat> so that's 42,000. 42.69, 42.7, whatever. 42,000 times more radioactive atoms in a single bundle. And the reactors had 3,450 bundles. I'll get to that part in a second. But 42,000 times more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and then all the beaches on the planet into our environment with just a single bundle for and the reactors whole so times three thousand four hundred and fifty bundles I don't like this at all here we go Ooh. Uh, you don't want to know maybe I shouldn't tell you uh, 147 million 147 million times uh, radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands on the planet. Uh -huh. There's a number. Uh, 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 not so quick. Now, as the buildings fall down on the radioactive material and, and are cannibalized and, and atomized and aerosoled, they are, those particles are now, those elements are atoms, right? That's what everything is made of. And so now you have ionized and radiated those elements in the bowels of hell. And so then you gotta talk about all the chunks that are emitting and splitting the atoms and the new and are you know throwing out the neutrons and the x-rays into the environment. Then you gotta think about the three reactors and but you gotta think about the fuel pools. You gotta think about how many are in those pools. And so the number just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you have I'm going to say a thousand tons a day radioactive water hemorrhaging through that place every day. Minimum, it's probably seven, eight, ten times more than that. Because the buildings detonated and sprayed rods, uh, pellets from the rods. The rods are full of pellets. <coughs> Excuse me, all over that site. It's hell. And so they came with bulldozers and bulldozed over shit. Does that mean that it's all okay? No. <coughs> a really dry throat, man. Since uh, May the twentieth last month, when there was a big fire by Unit Four. Now, Unit Four, if you go look at recent pictures of it, uh, remember there was two detonations. The fuel pool melted and burnt twice. We don't even think it's there. But the fable is, it's there and it's fine. And CBS and I've done videos about this have put up, and soon I'll have the wire cast back up so I can import pictures in the videos but let's keep going and so CBS and CBC and RT and BBC and CBC and ABC and NBC and MSNBC and blah blah blah, 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 blah have all come out in the last number of months three months say and claimed and showed us pictures what they claim was building four and now at the same time there's this it looks like they put a sarcophagus around building or on, uh, close to building four, but that's to actually 
a building to support a crane, allegedly, to try to reach in and pluck out the MOX fuel, because building three, rather, or building four also had 500 pounds plutonium, 500 kilograms of plutonium in it, at least, and MOX fuel in that building. All of them had MOX fuel, all of them were using, all of them were using silo missiles that sat in silos for decades. And so these have already been through the chain reaction. Really, 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 really. And the media will tell you, the media now will tell you that Unit 3, which is missing, it's missing. It's a 10-story building, and it's missing. The fuel pool is missing. The reactor core was ejected, and we covered that stuff extensively. But just for a click off the calculator, 147 million, just in one reactor, just the core, it can produce that immediately through the aerosol. Now, it didn't all aerosol, right? There's a whole lot of the core melted down. But what happened was it cannibalized everything around it because it hit temperatures of five to 9,000 degrees regularly. And rocks will melt, disappear, atomize, literally, like some kind of cartoon, at 2,000 degrees. And, and the cores, we, you know, Chernobyl was one third the size, and he sacrificed a million people. There were 600 pilots when in originally, they all died of radioactive radiation poison, uh, radiation sickness. Vicious, vicious sickness. Some of them fell right down into the reactor, the pilots. They were totally disoriented. They went through the plumes. Going in to drop boric acid, to drop lead, to drop concoctions down and so that people can get in and try to do a 30 a 10 second 20 second run and think about Chernobyl where they ran out and you'll find a link below to that Chernobyl where people were going out on the roof 15 or 20 seconds and then they would go and throw a piece of graphite from the explosion from the reactors off the roof and then they run off the roof and go home and never go on a nuclear facility again and a lot of them of course unbelievable illnesses and deaths painful that they were thrown away but they were conscripted there were 600,000 conscripted and they, and they conscripted a whole bunch of miners I can't remember 40 or 50,000 miners minimum probably double that to dig a, a tunnel underneath Chernobyl this was a 30% meltdown this wasn't uh, you know Nuclear missiles going through the chain reaction again like they were doing at Fukushima, which is insane. It's the insanity is insane. Insanity. <coughs> and so Chernobyl, just a single reactor in Chernobyl would have been three times worse than Fukushima. Or a single reactor at Fukushima is three times worse than Chernobyl. Just if they had the same kind of fuel, because it's three times the size. And Chernobyl was one third of meltdown, Fukushima 100%. With Fukushima three times the size. That should worry the living daylights out of you because it's right on the ocean and it's been hemorrhaging. It's not like there was a release into our ocean and then every, you know, they stuffed a whole bunch of homeless people in the hole and plugged it up. I'm sure they tried. But uh, uh, this is a plume every minute. A thousand pounds, a radioactive dye. Is there anything I can liken it to? The most appropriate thing to liken it to, like St. Paddy's Day. Every minute. Like the best St. Paddy's Day where they dyed a river in Europe you've ever seen, that's probably 25 pounds of dye. There's a thousand pounds with uh, half lives time. Everything's times 10. When you hear the word half life, it's a fabrication, it's times 10. Let me, let me uh, jump around a bit so 147 million times all the grains of sands on the beaches so it's a snowstorm in our environment in other words because this stuff floats around like the dust in your house on a sunny day and because of the salt water that was sprayed on the reactors not only did it destroy the integrity of the rods and cause crackings and hydrogen releases and everything else, and explosions originally from spraying that salt water on it. But it, there's links below. It created uh, sulfur peroxide, what we call buckyballs, 
and these are little nuclear engines, they're not solutable in water. And there's a study below, but this phenomenon was known uh, during the nuclear testing in the ocean, of how just a nuclear detonation of bombs in the ocean had produced this phenomenon that we see today in, in, um, in Fukushima. you got to realize there's 500, 500 miles of coastline was torn off and is drifting towards North America, sorry. Right, so when you hear about the big tsunami debris headed this way, that's 500 miles of coastline. That's communities, huge communities. So it's about 2,000 miles by 2,000 miles of debris that's getting caught up in different currents out there, but it's, it's slowly infiltrating everything. But it did stay together as a big pile, so to speak. And every day out of Fukushima, there's approximately 50 miles by 50 miles of radioactive water. And so the next day there's another 50 miles or 50 miles and another day. If, uh, so every day, uh, 30 days a month, 365 days a year, 1,440 minutes a day for 1,170 plus days. Fukushima, three melted reactors, they also had their backs broken by the earthquake it picked you know four or five hundred miles of coastline up in the air and broke it and dropped it and these buildings there was 14 reactors minimum at, uh, in Japan that were forced into uh, shutdown because of damage and so the Dodaini had some serious damage at four of its reactors and uh, Tevco has hid the actual true carnage. And they had created over 5,000 studies with their modeling. And they never told anybody about the radioactive fallout. They kept denying it. And it, they come out and admit it. But then the next day they get up and they lie to the people in Japan about it. But then they admit it and they make it up in North America. But the tsunami was displacing everything right and so if it wasn't for the, the, the tsunami tepco never would have got away with this nobody would have the nrc would not got away with what they're doing and make no mistake if you're not familiar with that is the nrc is murdering 8.8 .8 million species on this planet it because their job is to deal with this we hired them we funded them we gave them uh, 1,800 employees or 3,800 employees, whatever it is they got. Yeah, they hired 1,800 more. And they're all PR people. They're all PR spokespersons. They're all to go out and spin it. That's why they had to hire all these people. And no matter what, they will murder 8.8 .8 million species on this planet with Fukushima. But if we have another event like Fukushima... We're, in a, we're just in an amazing amount of trouble. And we've had a lot of these events, but not like Fukushima. Sellafield, England, is hemorrhaging uh, 4 million liters a day into the Atlantic Ocean. So it's MOX facility where we believe there's a meltdown in progress. And, you know, there's been major releases seen on that coastline, and they always come out and blame it on radon. Where uh, Ken Busler and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and people like Jay Cullen and people like uh, the Alberta professor I called in a few videos back from Alberta, can't remember her name now. But these people are PR firms. Uh, they come out and say a banana, you'll get more radiation from a banana, like John Neal from uh, Oklahoma University. You get more radiation from a banana, and Ken Busler and Jay Cullen, they all say it. All the all the all the milk pieces out there on TV will say the same thing. You get more radiation from a banana than you could from Fukushima. Well, because it's so far away. See, that's what they say. But I'll tell you how that why that's such a big fable is because the jet streams at 100 miles an hour goes 2,400 miles in a day. So it takes three days to hit Canada and the United States coastline, and within seven days it's a blanket in North America. It didn't stop for eight months hemorrhaging hardcore, right, at extreme temperatures and cannibalizing everything around the melted coriums, and they disappeared. They melted through the containments, like number one melted through the containment in five hours. 
It was a meltdown 55 minutes after they lost power. There was damage during the earthquake. There's an amazing amount of real, you know, authentic speculation that these some of these plants melted down from the earthquake. Not that that matters because it was 500 miles stripped by the tsunami and that was going to do the job anyway. Earthquake or tsunami, in that context, it didn't matter. They were going to go down. Fukushima now is is uh, has killed the Pacific, essentially finished off the Pacific. And the reason we have a, we have this, uh, I, I spent 14 years under the ocean, but I spent my entire life on the ocean. And I've done both, in, uh, every industry on both oceans, upstairs and on the ocean floor. I come from a very unique perspective, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I don't know another person out there, on the planet, in Canada anyway, that has worked every industry in the Atlantic Ocean and every industry in the Pacific Ocean. Upstairs and down on the ocean floor. Think about that one. You know, when I when I left the Pacific originally I had 30,000 hooks. And there was a hook every six feet tied onto a ground line. And I had 120 gill nets. And I had hearing licenses and halibut licenses and capelin licenses. I had all the ground fish licenses because they had collapsed the fishery on purpose and they let the international fleet set up auto packs in Ontario because Ontario has no natural industry or Quebec and they forsaked the East Coast. And so too many people left that province, so I was one of them because, like I say, I had one payment left on the boat. But it was the end of, and it still is, you put a moratorium on it and never took it off. But I'm just saying that so you can understand the perspective I come from when I talk about what I'm talking about here in a minute. Is the ocean, at 14 years, 315 days average, 6 hours a day on the ocean floor, 100 day trips back to back without coming ashore. I come from a different perspective than anybody you're probably ever going to meet. I come from a perspective of growing up with Jack Cousteau books, and that's all I read. It was that National Geographic. But you could not go anywhere in the house, you would not find the Jack Cousteau Encyclopedia of Under the Ocean, and that's all I read. Read up until I was like 21 years old. No matter what else I was doing, I had a Jack Cousteau book on my lap. Uh, the big encyclopedias. And it was something that I had coveted, and I have no concept of why. But it was something that I knew that uh, it was, there was no way around that I was, this was my whole life, and so it was. And so when, when I say that there's 20, they're expecting an extinction now, uh, right from Mexico, or from Alaska to Mexico, of 20 different types of starfish. To me, who have been on, out of the 26,000 islands in British Columbia, I have walked on at least 4,000 of them. You can only spend six hours a day on the ocean floor. And so then you would go hiking on the islands. You'd swim ashore in your suit and hike to the edge of the island, swim to the next island, walk around that looking for glass balls from Japan. They used to hand blow the glass balls for the dragger nets and everything else for their floats. And so we covet them here. And so I would, some days I would hit five or six islands like that in a row. But some islands, it's like Banks Island, is 50 miles long. And But I did spend four months on that island. I did spend four months in Eddie's Pass. I did spend f another four or five months in Larson's Harbor. I spent another four or five months on the west coast of Banks Island and King Cowan Inlet. And I ran the fleets up there. And I ran barges up there with ten boats on it full, and I would run the divers and I would spend six hours a day on the ocean floor. Multi-billion dollar operations. And I'd done that because I just, I never got sick of jumping off the side of the boat. I just never got sick of it. But everywhere you went, there was this one thing in common was starfish. That's what makes up the ocean floor. Everything else, and everything works in harmony. If you pick up a starfish, the ocean fills in that spot with stars, starfish. And if a big starfish like the sun starfish, is moving 
along the ocean floor, all the other starfish will get out of vacated and get out of its way. And he's usually chasing a sea cucumber. And I used to take sea cucumbers, put them under the leg, and work there for six hours of a starfish, put them under the leg. And for six hours, he would wiggle and shit out his guts, because that's what sea cucumbers do. And then just before I came back up, because I used to run the hookah diving systems, but I could burn up nine tanks of air on 100 foot tables in a day, coming up and sitting there and watching my, cal my computer and doing my tables to see if I can get another 10 minutes on the bottom. So you sit there all suit up for 20 minutes and you're like, okay, off gas enough to go <laughs> back down. I ran boats for two years with hyperbaric chambers on it for one person at a time, and I've had three of us in there day after day after day. I done uh, everything you can imagine in boat oceans. And the most frightening thing about it is the headlines I'm reading were all 20 species of starfish. The starfish are the ocean floor. They're the, the biggest population of the habitat. And it's spectacular that it's it's a living floor. The ocean is a living entity as it is. You, you know, you, you can go into the ocean anywhere and take out a drop, put it under a microscope, and hundreds of thousands of creatures, just from a drop under a microscope. But a glass of water would have 75 to 100 million phytoplankton into it. These are the bases of the food chain. These are the bases of the oxygen. And But there's trillions of other creatures in a glass of salt water, but 75 to 100 million of them are the very bases of the food chain. Now, if you were to take that glass of salt water, 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, the bases of the food chain, the bases of the oxygen, the 50% of all the oxygen on the planet is created through that process, then you took an isotope from Fukushima and dropped it in there, you would kill all the creatures, the trillions of creatures in that glass of water, plus the 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, the basis of life itself. And so Fukushima is coming out of 50 square miles a day. And they want you to believe that this stuff is like insignificant, like a banana, or like walking in the sunshine, or like getting a dental x-ray, or like eating potato chips, or, or like uh, the natural uranium-238 in the ocean. I could take a bat of uranium-238 in the ocean, and I did for 14 years, and i never seen anybody out there with big tumors, couldn't get into their dive gear, because he had big fucking tumors, excuse the language, big tumors. They couldn't get in their gear. Big tumors, you couldn't get your helmets on. I never see nobody like that. How come? How come I don't see fish out or big friggin' tumors following me around when I'm diving? And I would have a hundred fish follow me around all day long trying to get some prawns and shrimp and small creatures that are kicked up by my flippers. And so there's a flop now of squid. Not even a squid! Do you got any idea how much squid was actually in the ocean, in boat oceans? I'm not going to go down that road, but I can tell you nightmares of me jumping in the ocean and getting clobbered by squid and sharks going after them, and me peeing in my suit and not telling anybody and coming up quicker than I've ever come up. Ah, let me get out of here. I went down because birds were feeding, so I wanted to go down and see what they were feeding on. I jumped off the side of the boat. Whoops. <laughs> squid everywhere poor visibility and sharks feeding on them that was something right for me but I'm not afraid of sharks I just I didn't like that because I get claustrophobic sometimes when I haven't got good visibility you know my job was to come in and take over operations and, and, and bring them back online and make them work hire and fire and train and burn money we burn money, that's what we've done. It was an amazing amount of money you burn. My boss, when he would come out and dive, he would make 50, uh, 25 grand an hour. He only worked two hours a day, lazy bugger. But he was making 25 grand an hour. A sickening. Sickening. Uh, but he would only work like two hours a year, two weeks a year. And he mainly, uh, just mainly beach comb like myself. We are you know, really good friends for a number of years. Most of the operators in British Columbia are my friends, personal friends. Most of the most millionaires, the billionaires, Tim Joyce, Tim got busted with, what was it, $380 million worth of uh, pot. 
and uh, Laurie Bigor, and I ran his fleet when he was in jail. He only done 18 months. He spent a quarter million dollars a year on lawyers staying out of it. But he came back, I'll just tell you a story, he came back from Vietnam. He was supposed to go fishing for two weeks, and he didn't come back for two years. And when he came back, he had um, his 150-foot liveaboard tugboat stuffed with marijuana from uh, Vietnam. An American shot him up off the coastline. He went into the Queen Charlotte's here. There's 26,000 islands up there. Lost him and hid everything on an island. And then he went and hired... <laughs> Damn, I love him, though. He is a good soul. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. You won't, you won't find any crazier, though. He made his money originally diving 300-foot uh, uh, wrecks, uh, six, 700-foot ships, and knocking off the props and the shafts. And so then he would get a big, he, uh, I digressed on it, I don't know, but then he would get a big tug, or um, before he had his tugboat, he would get a big uh, uh, dragger to come out for five grand, whatever, and lift it off the floor, bring it in, and put it on the back of a transport truck, and give him $600, and they would drive it up to the, to the yard and weigh it, scrap yard, and then he'd get himself a $40,000, $50,000 check. And they could do that one a day, between the two of them, both ex-Navy SEALs. But they were both crazy. They were nice people, but they were originally crazy. But yeah, when you make that, when you make kind of money they were making, it's different. I, I lost. Sorry, folks. So anyway, the ocean, let me hit those headlines right quick for you. The sugar got no filters, got, haven't got 4,000 chemicals like the signature used to see in, and the EPA grandfathered in, blah, blah, blah. 65,000 chemicals when they were created. In 1981, they, they, they let in all chemicals, and so the tobacco industry put 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette, because they could, legally, because the EPA had never done no environmental human impact studies. And then the filter makes the particles smaller, and they get through the liners of your lungs. These don't have the 4,000 chemicals, and they don't have the filter. So don't give me a hard time. Ay, 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 ay. California fishermen skunked. Fishermen got skunked. They haven't seen a squid. Well, I grew up, you know, we used to jig the squid on the rollers, fresh bait for your hooks, and we put out thousands a day. And so we had to go out every day and jig squid on the big rollers, and you jig the squid, and every hook would be torture squid on it. And as soon as you come over the side of the boat, they squirt you right in the face. Whack! And they're blowing you. Literally blowing you right on the spot. And I kid you not. And it's like a, it's an arrogant anyway. It won't kill you. It won't permanently blow on you. But it'll hurt like hell. And so you can't turn. you got to have your, your southwestern on, which is a hat for salt water or whatever. And then you got to have a, a jacket on, the hood up. And it's smashing in the side of that. They spit at you. Everyone of them coming aboard the boat, for some reason, knows you're it. And they have a whack at you. It's the damnedest thing. And so you can always get squid. Now, to go out and not get any squid for the fishermen, to go all over the place, to the places they've been going for decades, for millenniums, and not get a squid. Well, the same thing happened uh, with mackerel. Same thing happened with sardines. The same thing happened with anchovies. They disappeared. Well, I mean, it's probably got nothing to do with 50 square miles of radiation. That will, you know, and let me get back to that one again for a second. Uranium-238, the natural stuff in the ocean, they named it that to confuse you. You can take a bat in that all day long. But if you took a bat in Uranium-238 from Fukushima, you will die. You will not live to see the end of that week. You are dead. You will absorb three liters at least through your skin. And that, my friend, is you're talking about billions of becquels a cubic centimeter. A man-made, ionized, radioactive material that will mess you up and you will be done. You will never go outside anywhere once you got it, if you could get it of the bathtub, I doubt if you'll survive it. You'll be cooked. They will cook you. Well, 40 minutes on the roof of uh, Chernobyl would cook you. Let's put it that way. 
So what would happen if you filled up a bad tub and got in there, sat in there with no protection on whatsoever? Just sat in it and soaked yourself in it? Yeah, you wouldn't even get out of it. I guess if you just jumped in it and jumped back out, but that's not what we're talking about. I can go, and I did, and you swim in the ocean all the time. There's hot springs up north, and whenever we could, we go visit them. So you get in a hot spring right alongside the ocean, the natural hot springs. You run down, you jump in the ocean, you, be, uh, you run back up and you jump in the hot tub. The hot springs, natural hot springs. I've hit every one of them, I think, in British Columbia and all those islands that we know about. There's still a lot of islands up there we've never been on, never will be on. I knew there was an extra noise there. Stupid. Dana. I was supposed to shut that off. That's the noisemaker. The pelicans. Um, at a 10,000 breeding pairs. Uh, there was a whole bunch of these different studies a few weeks back from different institutions that went out every year and counted the baby pelicans. And it was like 10%. Well, because the sardines and the anchovies and the squid and the mackerels, blah, blah, blah. And we've had 20 species of starfish. 20 species. And hang on a second. I got one for you. Let's, let's bang off the rest of the night on headlines rather than me yakking away. Um, oh, let me see. Oh, I don't know. Let's go uh, America. America. Oh, hang on. I already got stuff on my desktop I got to get rid of. What's in this goodie pile, I wonder? There was that highly radioactive substance found in the Swiss dump. Remember that? A highly radioactive substance emitting in some places radiation 100 times permitted amount was discovered in Switzerland. Right, and they had found radium deposited in an old dump in the town. And so they kept it secret because they didn't want to scare the, uh, scare the 50,000 inhabitants. That, that's not what you were paid for. You were paid to protect them. Right? The Tetra River had evacuated 7,500 communities, 9,000 square kilometers in the late 40s. They said it was 120 kilograms of radioactive waste. Now all of a sudden they know exactly how many pounds are there. Never knew about it for 50 years, but now they got all the pounds in the dump. <laughs> Another big lie. <lawyer. coughs> Several hundred micro receivers. How do we know this person could even do the job properly? And he's certainly not going to tell the truth. 300 micro receivers per hour taken. 100 times permitted amount for an old dump. <laughs> they should well, 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 clean it up. Mr. Big Shot Nuclear Industry. And now here's what makes me sick. is exposure for three hours of that level of radiation will be equivalent to the tolerable level of a whole year. A background, normal, insignificant, stupid, bananas, potato chips, and wagon and sunshine crap. But what they done was they just flipped it. See, they can't help it. They got to tell a lie. They got to tell a lie. They got to throw out lies like that. That's like background radiation. No, it's not. You ingest it, you're getting a cancer. That's the difference. You walk in the sunshine, you make it a sunburn. You swim in the ocean, nothing's going to happen to you. But Ken Busel will equate all of the natural uranium in the ocean, all the natural potassium in the ocean. There's like 35,000 terabecquels or petabecquels of uranium-238, natural, stupid, harmless. You can swim in it all day long, uranium-238. Stupid. It's natural. And potassium-40, there was like 15 million petabecquels. I mean, come on. If you eat a banana, a potassium-40, you off-gas the exact same amount. Your body can't hold anymore. It's stupid. And then you say, well, and then there's only like 70 petabecquels that come out of Fukushima, and so compared to potassium-40 and the natural uranium-238, it's not very much, no. But no matter how much is out there, uh, the ocean, I swim across the ocean, not going to hurt me. Well, excluding what's going under now. But if you get into a bad tub or swim off the shoreline of Fukushima, you will die. That's the end of you. It's the end of the ocean. Uh, but let me cover a couple of these weird old headlines I got here. 
Israel foaming at the mouth as Russia announces plans to build eight reactors in Iran. I'm foaming in the mouth at that one. But you got to realize Iran's got 49 military bases on its border. The frigger they going to do? The only one that's causing war down there is Israel. Israel got 5 million Palestinian refugees in refugee camps. No such thing as an Israeli refugee, but you got 5 million Palestinian refugees, and you think there's not going to be any animosity or blowback from that? That's disgusting. That's sickening. What they got done to Palestine and Gaza is cruel. It's the cruelest thing I've ever seen. You go down there, and instead of trying to fit in, you create 5 million refugees, and everybody else is living in a toxic wasteland from 25,000 depleted uranium rounds to fire it into the prisoners in that 31 mile by 7 mile shithole called Gaza Strip lift. Israel's taking all the land, all the water. They've imprisoned the population. They've got checkpoints everywhere. They got they just recently arrested 200 people in Palestine because there's three missing uh, crazy settlers that were probably kidnapped by some pedophile rabbi. Almost every rabbi out there seems to be a pedophile. As it goes on and on. Anyway, let me jump another one more. I know I get whacked there sometimes. Um, radioactive poison, contaminating the North Pacific. Yeah, what I got here, Dana? CNN, Fukushima follow grossly underestimated. That was a recent headline. Remember CNN said, uh, grossly underestimated, said Fukushima was equal to 7% of Chernobyl. 7%. Well, May 22nd, two days after a massive fire at Fukushima live streamed and auto uploaded onto Topico's website from their webcam that shows a, when you, because it's a three minute video, it's compressed from a one hour video. And so when you unpack it, you see a fire slowly for 30 minutes rage at a control and uh, they, Right now, there, we don't know what happened down there. But you got to realize, and I, and I never finished that part, Reactor 4, they got a building built over it. So it looks like a sarcophagus, but it's not. It looks like uh, structurally to help the integrity, and they claim it is, but it's not. It doesn't touch the building. It's meant to support equipment to try to lift out some of the assemblies at a Unit 4. Unit 3 is missing. Unit 2, the reactor, now they're saying the reactor... Containment vessel had snapped off a long time ago. Of course it did. Reactor 1 uh, is a million sievers outside its gate. And, I mean, they sacrificed the homeless down there. That's all they're putting in there is homeless. There's no one down there knows what they're doing. There's not, you know, the heralds are unspoken, faceless, nameless people that are drunk and high and are, have been thrown away by society and have been tricked into going down there. A lot of these can't read or write. A lot of children are there. A lot of migrants. A lot of uh, people that the system just wants to get rid, rid of are thrown in there. Remember Chernobyl sent in a million people for a 30% meltdown of graphite from a detonation. One third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. So what do you really think is going on there? It's hemorrhaging into that ocean 1,440 minutes a day. And so all, you know, let me finish off on that one too, because I didn't. You know, I spent all that time under the ocean, and one of the things that really was odd was every year, not odd, I guess, but was odd because you would, you would work in that environment. Sorry. And so all the marine life every year around the same time hatches. And so the ocean becomes another soup of life of babies. So ocean is a soup of life because when you look at a glass of ocean water with 75 to 100 million phytoplankton and a trillion other creatures, it's not hard to figure out what I mean when I say ocean is a soup of life. But the ocean is a soup of life in another way for a couple of months a year when you have babies. So you got to remember that uh, sardines, that the squid, that the anchovies, 
And these, all of these creatures, baby, little tiny, little tiny, uh, transparent creatures, when I'm diving six hours a day during a couple of months of that, when they're floating around, all the sea urchin eggs and starfish eggs and jellyfish eggs and crab eggs and all these eggs are just floating around in the ocean. And even when you try to sleep at night time, because I'm out there for a hundred days at a time, so you wake up, you've done two marathons, you eat a plate of food this big and drink a whole pot of coffee right out of the pot. Just kidding you. And you go back into the ocean and all you see is just these creatures everywhere. Well, 50 square miles a day, cutting that up, killing it, destroying it, mutating it. But it's not like the radiation that's going to come out of there is just going to create a whole bunch of mutated creatures. and Life will be different. No, it, it, is, it extinguishes life in the ocean. It extinguishes the phytoplankton, extinguishes the very basis of the food chain. And guess what? If you take that out of the equation, everything else hits the bottom. Everything else is running because everything is based upon the phytoplankton. Everything is based upon that. That magical, wonderful, incredible, massive thing is not that massive when you take it in the context of 50 square miles a day coming out of Fukushima. Or 50 cubic miles, but 50 square miles. And, you know, the tides are going, the corrosion currents come straight across. That's 130 days later, the first plume slammed into our coastline. But it was mixing with relatively good water from the west coast, right? And so it comes across and it kind of splits and goes like, like a mustache towards Alaska and down towards New Mexico and then centers in towards Vancouver uh, Island and one of the Fuca Straits and all these places and so when you got it coming at it every day right behind it is another 50 miles behind that slamming in the coastline right was all these 50 mile patches for 1170 days now as that fills up these chunks of the ocean the bottom end of the Pacific it's moving into the South Pacific it's moving down into the aquifers it's being picked up right through evaporation and by clouds rain clouds it's being that also finds its way up into the lower and upper tropospheres and that will rain take a decade or a year depending on how high it went to rain out and so you think about the Trans-Pacific pollution, rainforests or forest fires in Asia, pollution from the Asian cities, now that comes across the ocean, studies done on that. These are great big particles, Fukushima, one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. You know, so small, you cannot comprehend it. You need special equipment just to see it. But if you ingest it and you have it already, it takes 10, 5, 10, 15 years to give you serious cancers, serious in, uh, illnesses that might not be picked up. And there's a link below to the DCA. You got to think about turmeric. You got to think about uh, wa watercress. You got to think about all the foods out there that are high in nutrients. Not the GMO. They got no. They got almost all the parts per million engineered. They left a the little tiny bits in it so they can call it. Uh, creature because it's not food GMO is not food and so that fuels your cancer you know like the syrup you put on your pancakes most of that will fuel your cancer unless it came you know pre-2011 everything is going to fuel your cancer at a supermarket from GMO the aspartame coca-cola your orange diet in particular is drinks are extremely bad for you they're worse than the regular soft drinks by far because they use a, a GMO sugar that's 10,000 times more sweeter but because it's a GM, it's a sorry because it's a GMO product right aspartame is from poop of bacteria poops right and then that creates the aspartame like the sugar 10,000 times more sweeter than normal sugar how could something like that ever turn out good and so you have to avoid all of that and think about think about it this way. GMO corn on the cob 
is like any kind of GMO food out there. So we'll use that as an example. And you would need 428 GMO corn on the cob to get the same amount of calcium in a single organic corn on the cob. So single organic or you eat 428. Now that's a study. And to have similar numbers uh, for the comparisons of potassium, magnesium, of iron, cobalt, of carbon. Because GMA, uh, GMO has these creatures, they engineered the nutrients and the macro and micro nutrients out of your, your food. And then they call it food, but it's actually a creature because it attacks you like a creature. It's really, really, truly insidious what GMO does to uh, animals, to insects. All GMO farms have to have a section, a refuge for insects and butterflies and grasshoppers to go and gravitate to because the fields mutate and destroy everything, you know, long way under the ground, the root system. It's really... Well, I mean, GMO, you got to realize, genetically modified creature, Monsanto is the most famous, Synentec, and a few, there's quite a few of them, but Monsanto is the worst one. Everything craft is GMO, by the way. That's a better way to look at it. Everything craft is evil, will fuel any cancers in you. But Monsanto, it sprayed, it created the chemicals to murder and mutate and destroy an entire country for nine years. They chemtrailed. Agent Orange over Vietnam for nine years. That's chemtrailing. That's your very, that's your perfect example of chemtrailing is what they've done to Vietnam. The big B-52 uh, outfitted to chemtrail the sky with Agent Orange 24 hours a day, seven days a week for nine years. It was an inconceivable amount that they used there. And it was meant to defoliate, each, take the leaves and, and branches off the entire country. And that's banned worldwide because it's a dioxin. It's a toxin. Now, they engineer dioxins and toxins. I always talk about the glyphosates and the formaldehydes, but there's at least five engineered into the food. You can't wash it off. So you can't eat it. You can't get it off your food or out of your food. And not only that, the DNA of the food might have insects, DNA. It might have just the stupidest DNA imaginable. And uh, it's meant to hurt you. And so it's not only Fukushima, it's not only all the, the other radiation releases to manacle over the last 70 years into your environment. Every nuclear plant leaches out, evaporates out 120,000 liters a day of radioactive material in your community. The fuel rods are all broken, right? They're all cracked, right? None of these are in... There's a coning cladding on them. When you look at the experiments done on them, as soon as you put them in a chain reaction, they get damaged to them. And these cracks allow out the cesium and the strontium, the 100 times more strontium. Whenever you heard cesium, it's 100 times more strontium. That's why you don't want to talk about cesium, because when people find out, they'll look back and say, holy shit. You take Ken Buesler. Wow, we're not finding no cesium. Just a few backwalls. But there's a hundred times more strontium. They're not even looking for it. And he'll tell you that too. There's a hundred times more strontium. But he, nobody will ask him. Nobody will hold him to account. Nobody will stick it to him. Nobody will research it in the media that puts him up there that hosts them. National Geographic will allow them to get up and say bananas. It's like bananas. The Los Angeles Times allows them to get up and say it's like walking in sunshine. The New York Times allows them to get up and say... It, and CBC done it, and BBC even done it, and everybody have done it. All the mainstream media done it for Ken Buesler. They all bent over and took one for the team. And they let Ken Buesler get up there and say, oh, you know, that'd be like getting a banana, eating a banana. But you can't get any more radiation by eating banana because it's homeostasis, potassium-40. And so that's a, that's a provable lie. I mean, there's 2,000 pictures below my video from TEPCO's website. Go download them. Go look at them. There's millions of emails below here to TEPCOs, to the NRC, and these are some of these, a lot of these are redacted, a lot of these are duplicates, but there's your emails when everything happens, all right there. Those 2,000 pictures, you're never going to see them up in the media. How come? Because people will say, well, where'd you get that? 
I want to see some more. Because that don't add up to stuff you were saying. So to show that, did everything they say become so loy? Eh? Because it was. You know, there's people out there, and we've called them out many times on this site, that are saying the reactor's not melted down, that they plugged the holes. Woods Hole does it all the time. Uh, Woods Hole. That's shocking. I thought Woods Hole was a, an honorable, uh, you know, 850 scientists. Well, I need 850 scientists to do the job, not to do what they're doing. And so my intentions are to do it myself. I got high hopes, obviously. And I need a 300-foot boat with submarines. And I need float planes and helicopters and, and you know, just millions and millions and millions of dollars to be a competition against them. Woods Hole probably burns through a quarter million, half a billion dollars a year. Most of that is taxpayer. And a lot is from the Moore Foundation. And so they jacked people of good nature and used it to lie and cover up and deceive and to manipulate and cause devoid and doubt. And what, all they do is lie. But because they went to and got a degree, then people can't fathom somebody would lie. Why would somebody lie on TV? Well, I don't know. But if you go look up what a banana means, what homeostasis means, and then goes watch his Ken Busler, maybe you can figure it out on your own. Maybe you can't. But all I'm saying is, if you go look up what I'm saying, you find out everything I say is true. Everything I say is factual. Because if not, it gets used to destroy me, to beat me up, to marginalize me. And, you know, they try to demoralize me, but you can't do that with me. Because I'm not about anything. I'm about the ocean. I'm about this planet. I don't even care about me. I really truly don't. I've been to hell and back. I've been extremely privileged my entire life. I'm a Canadian on top of that. I have more privileges than I think anybody can even conceive. You can't conceive how privileged uh, I am or I have been. And I understand that. I understand that I'm one of the few on this planet with the ability to speak up, with the ability to use their voice and with the freedom and I leave my doors wide open. I leave my windows open. I don't worry. I have no fear. I don't have a heavy heart. I don't. I have a heavy heart because of Fukushima. I have a heart, heavy heart because I can't stand when someone says there's, it's equal to a banana. I look it up and I see it's homeostasis. Then if that doesn't offend me, then that means I'm an emotionless waste. And so, you know, that is my responsibility as a citizen in this universe in this universe and I mean the elements that we're creating at the nuclear death machines that's what they all are all nuclear reactors boil off 120,000 liters every day in your community of radioactive material and they lie to you they lie to you constantly and but it's not like they're all working together like they all, they're all in on it most of the people have no concept of what they're doing. They just got a job. They were told, no, oh, no, yeah. They looked it up and they were just defeated. I got all this education, all this time, energy. Everybody's really proud of me. I can't quit my job. Whatever people have to have, but most people can't quit their job and walk away once they realize that they're murderers. All nuclear scientists are murderers. Every friggin' one of them. Every one of them. They were murderers, and then they got a pains of conscience when they got older. And I can't forgive them. They knew all along they were murdering. But when they have a big accident, they realize, oh my God, this is going to come back and get me down the road. I'm going to go against the industry. They never really do. They never tell the truth. They come out, and they never change anything. The, main, the, the major activists for radiation on this planet have changed jack shit. Yeah, they might have closed down the plant, but it was going to close down anyway. And so they gave them that to try to make them feel like they got something they're going to go away and shut up. Well, the reality of it is, you know, nobody can walk away from what's going on here. Nobody can turn their back on what's going on here because it affects 8.8 .8 million species, including the stupid humans, the idiotic 
self-centered, egotistic, you know, flawed human species. We're the worst thing on this planet. But we're, there's a lot of good things about us. It's just because we've been molded and manipulated to be the way we are don't mean we can't undo that. Don't mean we can't change that. Don't mean we don't have the power. Gee, goodness me. We could have 120,000 at 4,000 a day. Peer review academic studies, because this is what they publish every day and lock away, that you pay for it. But we can have 120,000 studies in 30 days of how to deal with this. That's nothing. We have all, if we had a big meteorite coming at us, we'd have a 1.6 million peer review academic studies from all over this planet in a month. And how we're going to deal with it. And then the best one won. The best one, everybody join in and everybody start building things collectively all around this planet to deal with that big meteorite that was going to come down and whack us, right? That's what we would do. I hope we would. That's what we, that's what we think we, we are capable of doing. That's what we say we will do. That we will, if there is a threat from outer space, we will stop at nothing to deal with it. Well, the NRC in the Senate hearing a few weeks ago stopped at nothing to bury it to hide it, to disguise it, to mock and ridicule anybody who said anything different, who said, wait a second, wait a second, it's three melted reactors. And all of them said how much they loved the nuclear industry. All of them claimed it was carbon free. There's no such thing as carbon free. Carbon, you can't have a greenhouse without it. That's what you do to a greenhouse, to CO2 to enrich it. more CO2, and this planet has much more throughout its history, the bigger the foil each, the plants, the, the dinosaurs was a high carbon time. I wouldn't mind seeing it again. And so what they're doing is sequestering it before it gets all radioactive atoms into it, and then they're able to use that for their bunkers and their greenhouses in the future, because it doesn't have the radioactive atoms and particles in it. Right? That's what they're up to and get you to do the work and then use cardboard and tin cans and plastic to demonize you. There's 90,000 ships on the ocean, bunker burners. 15 of them produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. 90,000 of them in the ocean every day, 24 hours a day burning bunker fuel left over from the petroleum production. It's toxic, supposed to be in a toxic dump for 1,800 bucks a ton. They burn that. It's about 15% efficiency. Most toxic shit imaginable. And 90,000 of them is the equivalent of 42 trillion people driving automobiles all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week on this planet. You're breeding the air. The planet is amazing. The planet is wonderful. The ocean was. The Pacific is gone. That's going to migrate, obviously. It's already into the South Pacific. It's the Atlantic is getting hammered. We've been dumping it into the oceans for millennia, uh, since, you know, for 70 years. Illegally, against the will of everything out there, except for a uh, handful of the crazy critters out there, the, the disgusting. The, the NRC are the most despicable things imaginable. These are the lowest forms. These are the aliens in our midst. These are monsters. These are uh, Dr. Jekylls and Hyde's. Every one of these are truly demented. The head of the NRC, you know, uh, Alison McFarlane. Get up at the inner, get up at the Senate hearing, tell the entire country there's no issues, that there's no studies showing the disposition in North America, that Everything is under control. And t t how would she know? It's the homeless are doing the job. There's three melter reactors. So their job is not to tell you the truth, even though that's what you pay them for. Their job is not to try to deal with it, even though that's what you paid them for. That's why you gave them all the equipment. That's why you gave them the authority. That's why you gave them the ability. That's why you put the entire, every university on the planet at their disposal so they could one day say to all the universities, we need to build something so everybody can filter 
as much as this out of their water as possible, so that farmers can can uh, build uh, indoor greenhouses, and that all the the carbon we sequester can be scrubbed from most of the particulates and then used in the greenhouse, and how we're going to engineer food now to fight cancers. So easy to do. It's it was so hard to do to to fill up every shop in your country with GMO. It was so, they spent so much money stopping you from labeling that they that would pay for labeling for hundreds of years. It's just that they don't want you to know. They'll spend 1,100 times that so that you can't know and claim it's too expensive to label and that's why they're doing it when they easily have already spent enough to silence the conversation. Because they know their families will turn on them. They know their parents and their brothers and their sisters and their neighbors and their children will spit on them when they find out what they have done to make the ends meet. And that they're nothing and that they're just insignificant, horrible, disgusting, parasitic creatures on this planet. And that they're no different than the Ted Bundys. It's just they don't have the coward. They don't have the, the courage to do it themselves. And that they would just as easily work for the mob, taking children's bodies away and burning them, as they will work for the nuclear industry and hide what is happening. Like the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst that human has to offer is at your university, is teaching nuclear, is at your deans at your university that allows that to happen, is your your senators and your senate and your congress people who turn a blind eye. These are the worst that you have on your planet. These are the worst, the most despicable people throughout history. There's nothing more vile than what we have right now that has the ability and the authority to deal with this and stop this. We can put a windmill on every telephone pole. We can wrap every telephone pole in you know, in solar power. We can paint solar power onto your roofs and plug you right in. There's a hundred thousand ways we could go about this. Better than what we're going to do. The 8.8 .8 million species on the planet, we are the only species that can speak up, is us. And we have no choice. We have no options. There is no way around this. We have to get better. We have to get louder. We have to push back. We have to hold our chin up. We have to hold our heads up. We have to use everything, every trick, everything we have at our disposal, everything that is available to come out and try to give these people a conscience and try to bring back some kind of life into the future. Because as it stands, Fukushima is going to undo billions of years of genetic superior selection and turn it in the fairy dust. I don't think that should be human's last stand. It's because a handful of corporations and the uninsurable, the, which is the nuclear industry is uninsurable, you can't insure it. Follow the money and then hang the fuckers at the end of it. At least do that. That's what we should be doing. That's what our system is designed to go do right now, is arrest these people. And instead they'll arrest you for protesting. And so, you you know, at what point is going to become the tipping where a large section of the population wakes up and then everybody else loses this one opportunity in our history to deal with it? Because if the population goes panic, that's what the system wants. And we'll never get the opportunity again. This is that we have reached the pinnacle, the crux of history, and we are the generation that will decide the outcome of 8.8 .8 million species. The people watching this right now, we are that generation. It has been stowed upon us to put aside every comfort in our life and to dedicate ourselves in a short order into breaking this paradigm and destroying it. We have to bring down the ivory towers and we have to bury the nuclear industry one at a time, if that's what it takes. I don't think that's what it takes. I think it just takes 
a, a worldwide awakening. Remember what happened. Remember what happened to Rupert Murdoch. A billion people in a 24-hour period cursed the ground that he walked on and raged against him. That rage is needed again on the nuclear industry and it's coming. As more and more people get connected to the internet, they can never attain their utopia of controlling us. They can never attain their utopia of a police state. It's insignificant. No matter what they do, they don't got enough boot licking, cheerleading, lap dogs that will stand up against something as fierce as the righteous and the indignant that is coming after them in the near future. If I have anything to do with it, so I go, Dana, Hitler saluted. <laughs> Just to try to demonize me down the road. Look, he was trying to Hitler salute out there. Did he say that because I criticized the crazies? He created 5 million Palestinian refugees so they can have a paycheck. They're, no, they're just as dark as the nuclear industry and then some. Well, I mean, Israel is all about weapons. What a stupid nation that is. Its whole history, its whole existence depends upon war. And if you look at the Bible, the Bible says that the whole world will turn against Israel and God will come down and destroy the entire planet. And then only the people in Jerusalem will go to heaven. You tell me that's not crazy. If you're religious and you believe in the Christian Bible, then you have to believe in that. That is the prophecy. And that's what all churches back up Israel so much for. All right, they're the chosen one. Hey, when this is all said and done, there'll probably be uh, Tom Sawyer's book. And the future generation will find that. And everybody will believe that God was some kid going down a river on a fucking raft with a slave. That's what it'll be. Take it to the bank. I'll come and say goodnight. Nine hours and 12 minutes. One hour and 12 minutes. Ding, ding, ding. I'm sorry. What, 10 minutes passed. Well, let me get on the page. Well, there we go. Good night, Grandma Goldie. Hugs. Hugs, honey. MSVS. Kate's got a chat room below for the Fukushima hounds. For the hounds. It's awesome. Go check it out. I got the .com and .org and .net last night. <laughs> I can't tell you though because I'm off the shit. But I got it and I'll be telling you soon. When I get the 8 core and the full wire cast, I'm going to release the hounds. Make no mistake about it. We're going hardcore. Now to my, my new .com, I have unlimited bandwidth. Unlimited. And so I can put up a video and 500 million people can watch it. And it's not going to cost me an extra penny. <laughs> and I can put up super high quality. And everything is formatted uh, for all your PDFs, your cell phones. Do anybody actually use a PDF anymore? For your cell phones and your tablatures, and your computers and your big screens. It's automatically reformatted and you will get unbelievable. Your smartphone is going to look gorgeous. I already got stuff up there, but I haven't, I haven't uh, activated the site yet because I got... It's going to take me at least another week to work the kinks out of that. So that's really cool. And I got all the wiglets on it. Most of them today. The and so we're going for broke. And if I got to lead it, if I got to do, you know, I'm going to do my own thing, obviously. Because that way, I know something will get done. And I'm coming swinging, make no mistake about it. I want 300 foot boat. I want float planes. I want 850 scientists. I want my laboratory. I want massive. I want live stream out of the ocean at those, at those places. That's my intentions. Follow this stuff across the ocean. And I'll stream it out to you. From the drones, from the boats. they are gonna be robot boats. And we are gonna do this. And that is the bottom line. Because this has to be done. It's obviously we can't trust anybody else out there. They have all lied and equated it with bananas and said it's harmless and said there was no structural damage and said there's no melted reactors. Uh, well, you know and I know that that 
is not acceptable. That's not what we put you in power for. And so we will create the equalizer, the checks and balances, to hold all of these accountable. And we will create the system to bring them into the system, into the courts, and, and prosecute them. But I'm not only going one way, I'm going all the way. And you have no idea. You have no idea of how serious I truly am. You have no idea of how determined I am. And, but I can assure you that my will against their will, we will win. That is a fact. Whatever we put up, whatever we decide, we will accomplish. And whatever we can accomplish, we will accomplish it. Because that is our future. That is our destiny. And nothing. You can kill me. You cannot stop what is we will accomplish. That cannot be changed. We are going to do this. Good night, everybody. Mr. I can see too. David Maurer. Ain't gesture. Missing Sky. Grandma Goalie. Stacy, Toxic, good night, Dap Mac Man, 420, Ron the Flash, Miss Milky, we love Miss Milky, she's so awesome, and thank you, honey, for everything you're doing, I'm watching, Cats Alive, I can't keep up with it, but I'm trying, Mr. I Can See, Scottish Girl, yeah, it's happening right now, we got, everything's paid for, I paid for it all this morning, I organized it all last night, everything's authentic now. It's just I gotta finish up and figure out how everything works there and do a little video when it comes out to make sure you can use it properly and it's gonna be really cool. And I'll be integrating all kinds of you people, just like I got here right now, into that site. It's not about me, it's all about us. It's about changing and stopping and dealing with it and not burying our heads in the sand. We are not that person. We are better than that and we will prove that. Good night, folks. We'll catch you. We'll catch you hopefully the morning later the next night. I'm starting to get back into it, but as, like I said, I got so much going on. As as I accomplish a little bit more over the next couple of ye weeks, and we get that word cast and a new computer, I'll be here seven nights a week. I'll be hitting them. I got all the emails ready to go out to all the scholars and the academics to invite them on the show, and I will not sleep if that's what it takes to get them interviews. And I'll be able to import five people in. It's gonna be very exciting. It's all about getting the job done. All about motivating people. All about getting to the truth. All about it being authentic and factual. All about trying to save 8.8 million species. Right, they come before us. And let's start thinking that way, right? Which I know you folks are. You folks are incredible. Amazing souls, I'm very uh, privileged to, to ride along with you. And we'll catch you again soon, folks. Take care.